Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. Let me start off by saying that if you like crazy ideas, some experiments, and some failures, this channel might be for you. So hit that subscribe button. What you see is what you get on this channel, and if something doesn't work, I'll let you know. I did a couple of really controversial videos on using polyurethane to protect the cast iron on your table saw or other cast iron surfaces of your tools. The first video was using oil-based poly, and the second one was water-based poly. Both ended up being failures. Now let me defend myself by saying I wouldn't have tried either of these without some basis in success. Before I shot either video, I had a Craftsman table saw that I had treated with water-based poly, and it worked very well. Once treated, I never had to treat it again. I sold the saw and bought a new Grizzly table saw, so I wanted to treat it with the same stuff, and I tried the oil-based poly first. The oil-based poly didn't stick to the cast iron, so I sanded it down and tried the water-based poly. It worked much better, or should I say longer, but ultimately it wouldn't stick to the cast iron either. Now this is crazy. I put water-based poly on my 15-year-old Powermatic joiner. Although the table was dark when I got it used, I haven't done a thing to it in the two years after treating it with water-based poly. Not a thing. And absolutely no rust. Same with my Rikon bandsaw. I treated it with water-based poly after I noticed some rust forming and have not touched it since. That was a year and a half ago. No rust. And no flaking or peeling off either. So why won't it stick to my table saw? I have sanded down the table several times, cleaned it with alcohol, xylene, lacquer thinner, you name it, I've tried it. And I can't get the water-based poly to stick. This was driving me nuts. So I did a little research. Cast iron is made from generally three things. Iron, 3-4% to carbon, and 1-3% to silicon. There are four basic categories of cast iron. White cast iron gray cast iron, malleable cast iron, and ductile or nodular cast iron. Each has different properties and are good for different kinds of products. Everything from coal pulverizers to engine blocks to pipe fittings are used from the different kinds of cast iron. There are different grades of cast iron within each category, usually based on hardness, tensile strength, and compressive strength. There's not necessarily a bad grade of cast iron because each has advantages for different applications. Based on what I've learned, I assume that most cast iron tables used for woodworking tools are made from gray cast iron. One of the things that affects these ratings is the amount of graphite contained in the alloy. A higher concentration of silicon causes the carbon in the alloy to form flakes of graphite during cooling. This makes the cast iron self-lubricating, which makes it easy to mill, and it increases the vibration dampening qualities of the metal. I'm going to go out on a limb and theorize that it is this high level of graphite in my Grizzly Table Saw table that makes the polyurethane not stick. Why did it stick to my Craftsman, Powermatic, and Rikon tools? Don't know. Different companies, maybe different qualities of cast iron. If anyone is well-versed in metallurgy and knows different, please leave a comment and educate me. So what do I do now? As I said in the earlier videos, paste wax does not work for me. It has to be reapplied very often, and it takes several minutes and a lot of elbow grease for application. I had a ton of recommendation of products from commenters in my previous videos, and I've tried a lot of them. But the product I settled on, and am completely sold on, and keep in mind, these guys are not a sponsor, and I get nothing from them, the product is called Fluid Film. It's a lanolin-based lubricant, and it contains no silicone or Teflon. This is my table saw as is. The last time I put this on my table saw was about four months ago. Not a hint of rust, and still slick as glass. However, I want to show you how I apply it. I take 600 grit sandpaper and lightly run it over the surface just to take off any foreign matter that makes the surface uneven. 
like drops of glue or finish. Then I clean it thoroughly with a paper towel and xylene or denatured alcohol, going over it a couple of times until the paper towel stays relatively clean. I spray a little bit of the fluid film on each section, and this stuff is kind of thick. I'm using a clean paper towel. I evenly spread it out, covering the whole surface of the saw. Then immediately I take a clean paper towel and wipe away any excess. I tend to do this when I'm finished working for the day. That way it can dry, if that's the correct way to describe it, but I can let it dry overnight. And that's it. Many have asked if it interferes with finishing the wood I cut on the saw. I've never had any problem. Paste wax has never interfered or any other product I've tried. If there's no excess on the saw, and if you're going to sand or scrape before finishing anyway, I don't see any interference with finishes. Since I'm making one recommendation without compensation, I'm not going to do it twice by telling you where to get it. Just Google it and I'm sure you'll find a way to purchase it if you're interested. Now I'm sure many of you will comment on the products that work for you. That's great, and many who read those comments will hopefully learn a great deal. But as I've said in both earlier videos, Paste Wax did not cut it in my shop. Period. Not arguable. Maybe if I applied it every two days or so, but I'm not going to do that. Technology has progressed, and while Paste Wax may work for most, it is not the best thing out there. And it's not the best thing for me. Anyway, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Hope this helps you out in your shop. Thanks for watching, and there you go.